I am Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. If you want to email, that should be easy. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter and at Simpervivi on Twitter as well. It's Brian with a Y. Thank you, Mike. I think everyone's well aware of that. So this person here says, Why was a 71-year-old Ric Flair, what was he doing on a Raw that was taped on Saturday amidst the COVID outbreak in WWE? Dude, you're asking me. Living his best life. What do you think he was doing? He was Ric Flair. Do we want to look at this from Ric Flair's perspective, or are we looking at it from the perspective of normal human beings that realize that all of this could have been done on Zoom or some other uh, corporate video partnership that you could have pulled something like this off? No. He, if we're looking at this from Ric Flair's point of view, he's going to die there in the middle of the ring, and he will be happy if that's how this thing all goes down. It's just that nobody wants to see it actually happen this way. Dude, there were some big names that were not on Raw, not the least of which was Randy Orton. Man, and there's Ric Flair just being trotted out at 71. It's not even so much... I mean, it is obviously, you know, the fact that Flair is 71. He's in a he's in a he's in an age group that does not need to be getting COVID. But on top of all of that, I mean, don't forget, a couple of years ago, he was almost dead. Like the percentage, Literally. the percentage chance of survival for Ric Flair was, if I even told you, like you wouldn't even believe it. Like whatever. Okay, so five like percent, wasn't it? Let's, let's put it this way, right? So, whatever the chances of surviving COVID are, if you're 71, I think it's between 10 and 15 percent chance of death if you have COVID when you're over 70. Okay, whatever that percentage is, the percentage chance that Flair had of surviving two years ago is much lower than that. But he survived. But it was bad. We're talking, Ric Flair had to relearn how to walk. He had to relearn how to talk. Which, by the way, if you hear his promos out there, it's like, wow. I wish, if only I could relearn to talk like that. But the point is, he survived, but he was in awful, awful, horrible, near-death state two years ago. And here he is at 71, and they're dragging him out on stage on this Raw show in the middle of a massive outbreak within WWE. It's it's completely insane. But if you followed the story, like, you shouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, and here's the thing with Flair. Do you say he, he sounds better? You know, you wish he could cut a promo like that. If you listen to how he sounded when he cut that promo last week as opposed to uh, even earlier on this year, I mean... You know, in a way, you know, he's probably at his best that he's been at in a while. Certainly, it sounds that way as far as clarity goes and everything. I, It's one of those things, Brian. I, You're right. There's no reason he should be out there. There should be somebody telling him, no, you can't go out there. But there's not. Instead, there's a guy in management who gleefully said, well, you know, we're trying to do this as safe as possible so we can have Rick and his daughter out there because they're very precious to us. But if you're Ric Flair, I mean, where else is he going to want to be? And there are people there that are, I'm sure, understanding of that. They get that, and that's why... That's why he's there, but it's so. There's there's two sides to this. There's the flair side, and there's the you know there's the the pro wrestling side to this. Where where else does he want to be? It's like look, Jim Ross is another one. Jim Ross does not have to be in Florida. He could be on a video screen in Oklahoma. We we hear this with Moro and with Beth every week on NXT. They're not there, and it doesn't. Nobody realizes that. AEW would be just as easy to do, but why is he there? Jim Ross is there because he wants to be there, and I bet you, in to him, he has to be there because if you're home, then you're just thinking about all these other things. And you know, it's a different situation between Flair and Ross as to the reasons of wanting to be there. But you know, it's it's you'd have to drag them out literally kicking and screaming to do it so i i mean i'm not i'm not shocked by this at all it, somebody has got to make these decisions for them because again left to them left to the and left to the wrestlers that work with them that have grown up with them that have idolized them i can see them not wanting to say no to you know the irony of all of this after watching the show especially last night is if wwe just said nobody over the age of 45 is allowed to come to work 
because you're going to start to move into the higher risk category here. Nobody, and by the way, that includes Vince and Kevin Dunn. Like, the only people allowed to work these television tapings are people 45 and under in every single solitary department. And we're going to do this for four straight months or whatever. If they'd made that decision in, like, March, we'd probably be way better off right now. We'd have built better for the future. We'd have had younger younger voices in there. And, and like, everybody would have just been younger. But instead, well, we have what we have. It's like the plot of Wild in the Streets. You can't trust anybody over 30. Um, <laughs> you're, uh, you're right, I guess. Although, you know, then, then you'd have the legality of it that you're, you know, ageism, that you're stopping everybody, able-bodied people over the age of 45. But, look, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how old the people are that are there. Do you have the vision of wanting to build your future? And they keep having the hot shot from the past because they won't spend the time dedicated to to plan and sow their future 